Hello, beloved. This devotion is for Saturday of the 14th week after Pentecost, September 12th, 2020. We begin with our opening versicle. O Lord, open my lips, and my mouth shall declare your praise. Make haste, O God, to deliver me. Make haste to help me, O Lord. Glory be to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and will be forever. Amen. Hallelujah. Our psalm for the week is Psalm 32, beginning at verse 1. Blessed is the one whose transgression is forgiven, whose sin is covered. Blessed is the man against whom the Lord counts no iniquity, and in whose spirit there is no deceit. For when I kept silent, my bones wasted away through my groaning all day long. For day and night your hand was heavy upon me. My strength was dried up as by the heat of summer. I acknowledged my sin to you, and I did not cover my iniquity. I said I will confess my transgressions to the Lord, and you forgave the iniquity of my sin. Therefore let everyone who is godly offer prayer to you at a time when you may be found. Surely in the rush of great waters they shall not reach him. You are a hiding place for me. You preserve me from trouble. You surround me with shouts of deliverance. Glory be to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and will be forever. Amen. Our hymn for the week is hymn number 820 from Lutheran Service Book, My Soul Now Praise Your Maker. My soul now praise your Maker. Let all within me bless his name, who makes you full partaker of mercies more than you dare claim. Forget him not whose meekness still bears with all your sin, who heals your every weakness Renews your life within, whose grace and care are endless, and saved you through the past. Who leaves no sufferer friendless, but rights the wronged at last. He offers all his treasure of justice, truth, and righteousness, his love beyond all measure, his yearning pity or distress, nor treats us as we merit, but sets his anger by. The poor and contrite spirit finds his compassion nigh, and high as heaven above us, as dawn from close of day. So far since he has loved us, he puts our sins away. For as a tender father has pity on his children here, God in his arms will gather all who are his in childlike fear. He knows how frail our powers but who from dust are made. We flourish like the flowers, and even so we fade. The wind but through them passes, 
and all their bloom is o'er. We wither like the grasses, our place knows us no more. His grace remains forever, and children's children yet shall prove that God forsakes them never, who in true fear shall seek his love. In heaven is fixed his dwelling, his rule is over all. Our hosts with might excelling, with praise before him fall. Praise him for ever reigning, O you who hear his word. Our life and all sustaining, my soul, O oh, praise the Lord. Today's reading is from the second book of Chronicles, the 31st chapter. Now, when all this was finished, all Israel who were present went out to the cities of Judah and broke in pieces the pillars, and cut down the Asherim, and broke down the high places and the altars throughout all Judah and Benjamin, and in Ephraim and Manasseh, until they had destroyed them all. Then all the people of Israel returned to their cities, every man to his possession. And Hezekiah appointed the divisions of the priests and of the Levites, division by division, each according to his service, the priests and the Levites, for burnt offerings and peace offerings, to minister in the gates of the camp of the Lord, and to give thanks and praise. The contribution of the king from his own possessions was for the burnt offerings, the burnt offerings of morning and evening, and the burnt offerings for the Sabbaths, the new moons, and the appointed feasts, as it is written in the law of the Lord. And he commanded the people who lived in Jerusalem to give the portion due to the priests and the Levites, that they might give themselves to the law of the Lord. As soon as the command was spread abroad, the people of Israel gave in abundance the first fruits of grain, wine, oil, honey, and of all the produce of the field. And they brought in abundantly the tithe of everything. And the people of Israel and Judah, who lived in the cities of Judah, also brought in the tithe of cattle and sheep, and the tithe of the dedicated things that had been dedicated to the Lord their God, and laid them in heaps. In the third month they began to pile up the heaps, and finished them in the seventh month. When Hezekiah and the princes came and saw the heaps, they blessed the Lord and his people Israel. And Hezekiah questioned the priests, and the Levites about the heaps. Azariah, the chief priest, who was of the house of Zadok, answered him, Since they began to bring the contributions into the house of the Lord, we have eaten and had, and had enough and have plenty left, for the Lord has blessed his people, so that we have this large amount left. Then Hezekiah commanded them to prepare chambers in the house of the Lord, and they prepared them, and they faithfully brought in the contributions, the tithes, and the dedicated things. The chief officer in charge of them was Conaniah the Levite, with Shimei his brother as second, while Jehiel, Azaziah, Nahath, Azahel, Jeremoth, Josabad, Eliel, Ismachiah, Mahath, and Benaiah were overseers assisting Conaniah and Shimei his brother, by the appointment of Hezekiah the king and Azariah the chief officer of the house of God. And Kore, the son of Imna the Levite, keeper of the east gate, was over the free will offerings to God to apportion the contribution reserved for the Lord and the most holy offerings. Eden, Meniamin, Yeshua, Shemaiah, Amariah, and Shechaniah 
were faithfully assisting him in the cities of the priests to distribute the portions to their brothers, old and young alike, by divisions, except those enrolled by genealogy, males from three years old and upward, all who entered the house of the Lord as the duty of each day required for their service according to their offices by their divisions. The enrollment of the priests was according to their fathers' houses. That of the Levites from twenty years old and upward was according to their offices by their divisions. They were enrolled with all their little children, their wives, their sons, and their daughters, the whole assembly, for they were faithful in keeping themselves holy. And for the sons of Aaron the priests, who were in the fields of common land belonging to their cities, there were men in the several cities who were designated by name to distribute portions to every male among the priests and to everyone among the Levites who was enrolled. Thus Hezekiah did throughout all Judah, and he did what was good and right and faithful before the Lord his God. And every work that he undertook in the service of the house of God and in accordance with the law and the commandments, seeking his God, he did with all his heart and prospered. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. We continue with the Apostles' Creed. I believe in God the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, and in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended into hell. The third day he rose again from the dead. He ascended into heaven and sits at the right hand of God the Father Almighty. From thence he will come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Christian Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. Blessed be the Lord God of Israel, for he has visited and redeemed his people and has raised up a horn of salvation for us in the house of his servant David, as he spoke by the mouth of his holy prophets who have been since the world began, that we should be saved from our enemies and from the hand of all who hate us, to perform the mercy promised to our fathers and to remember his holy covenant the oath which he swore to our father Abraham to grant us that we, being delivered from the hand of our enemies, might serve him without fear in holiness and righteousness before him all the days of our life. Glory be to the Father and to the Son and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now and will be forever. Amen. Lord, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory for ever and ever. Amen. O God, from whom all good proceeds, grant to us, your humble servants, your holy inspiration, that we may set our minds on the things that are right and by your merciful guiding accomplish them. Through Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Today we pray the prayer for the leaders of our synod from the Lutheran Book of Prayer. We pray. O Lord, God and Father, send the bright beams of your grace and mercy on the leaders of our synod as they serve the people of our church. Equip them with every good and perfect gift that comes down from above. Give them wisdom and insight that they may discern what is best as they provide national leadership for our church. 
Give them courage and strength as they deal with pressing and difficult issues of church administration and supervision. Most of all, keep them faithful to their promise to carry out their office according to your holy word and in accord with the Lutheran confessions. Do not let the stresses and pressures and difficulties of their office discourage them or lead them into error. Keep far from them the temptations of the evil one. Give them the heart of the good shepherd that they may serve you and your people with humility so that in all they do they may decrease so that the kingdom of Christ may increase. Let them stand without wavering on your clear and gracious word. By the infallible truth and power of Christ and him crucified, let them be comforted in all the difficulties that their office brings. By the power of your spirit, give them peace and joy in their service to you and make them a blessing to our church as together we give you all praise, honor, and glory, O Father, together with the Son and the Holy Spirit, one God, forever and ever. Amen. We conclude with Luther's morning prayer. I thank you, my Heavenly Father, through Jesus Christ, your dear Son, that you have kept me this night from all harm and danger. And I pray that you would keep me this day also from sin and every evil, that all my doings in life may please you. For into your hands I commend myself, my body and soul, and all things. Let your holy angel be with me, that the evil foe may have no power over me. Amen. O Lord, hear my prayer, and let my cry come before you. Let us bless the Lord. Thanks be to God. The Almighty and merciful Lord, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit, order our days and our deeds in his peace. Amen. God bless your day, beloved.